In this tutorial 23, we will start chapter 8. We will talk about lamina and turbulent flow in pipes. And our focus of today is major losses. In previous video, we have looked at laminar flows using Navier-Stokes equation. In laminar pipe flow, the flow is just one dimension and steady. We see that a strict line for turbulent flow is not a straight line. That is, for turbulent flow, the flow is not one dimensional. Here shows the velocity at a point under lamina and turbulent flows. We see that the velocity of the point oscillates as time varies under turbulent flow. That is, turbulent flow is not even steady. Hence, the analysis of a turbulent flow is much more harder than a lamina flow. And people usually rely on empirical relations to find the quantities related to the turbulent flow. Since lamina and turbulent flow are so different, it is very important for us to know that if the flow is laminar or turbulent. To know when the flow is turbulent, we use the dimensionless number, Reynolds number. Its definition is given here, and we have shown that it is in fact dimensionless in tutorial 2. These limiting values, 4000 and 2000, are only for pipe flows. You will see other numbers in the next chapter, as well as in heat transfer. The Reynolds number plays a central role in fluid dynamics. It is because it represents the ratio of inertial force to fixed gas force. This fact can be easily remembered, since you can see mu in the bottom and rho in the top. The Reynolds number distinguishes turbulent flow from laminar flow, and turbulent flow and laminar flow are so different, you must always calculate the Reynolds number before we solve any problem in this chapter. And in general, dimensionless numbers are extensively used to study fluids. It is because we can do experiments by varying the dimensionless numbers. You will see much more examples of dimensionless number in heat transfer. As the fluid enters the pipe, it does not immediately become fully developed flow. That is, the shape will not be immediately formed after the entrance. Instead, it requires some length for viscous dissipation to occur and for the flow to form its shape. And this length is related to the Reynolds number differently in laminar flow and turbulent flow. You will revisit this concept of entrance length in heat transfer. Another difference for laminar and turbulent flow is that their velocity profiles are really different. For laminar flow, the velocity distribution is parabolic. We are going to see this in the next few minutes. As for turbulence, the resulting flow is nearly uniform. A consequence is that the kinetic coefficient as we discussed in chapter 5 is different for laminar and turbulent flow. For laminar flow, alpha equals to 2, which cannot be taken as 1. As for turbulent flow, alpha is quite near to 1, and it is appropriate for us to assume that alpha for turbulent flow is 1. Indeed, to look at laminar flow, we do not always have to look at the Navier-Stokes equation. Instead, we can do a fluid element force balance. So, let's do force balance along the flow direction. So, only this force points in the positive direction, and all the other three force or component points in the negative direction. So, we can write this result down. So, this cancels out, and we can obtain We can solve for tau in the above expression Now our tau direction points negative to the x direction And tau our x is supposed to point in the positive x direction And that is And since the flow is laminar, there is no radial component of velocity, and we can obtain And we can let this constant as A We call that we have a boundary condition, there is the no slip condition as R equals radius And this can be written as And we perform definite integral And we can expand this out
and this term is zero. And this is our expression for the velocity profile. So we are interested in these three things here. First, we find the flow rate. The flow rate is area times velocity. So let's just let this constant as b for simpler integration. And dA is 2 pi r dr, and that is So we can solve for the mean velocity. And that is half of the center line velocity. The center line velocity here is just found by taking this as zero. And the center line velocity is the maximum velocity we can get. So with this expression, we can solve for the pressure drop. Since L is this length, L sine theta is just the height here. So we can express this as So let's just do a quick example of that. We call that this tube is measuring the pressure difference. So let's label points 1, 2, 3, 4. And I will let this distance as A, this distance as B, such that A plus B equals 4 meter. And we can write down the manometer equation. Let's start from point 1, and we will find the pressure at point 3. Then we continue for point 4. Point 4 is above point 3, so negative. Then we continue for point 2. And this is the pressure at point 2. Here we have A and B, so we can combine this to get We assume the pressure drop from point 1 to point 2, and we can write down the pressure drop as, and we substitute the value to get. And then we can find the mean velocity from the flow rate. Since now the velocity is available, we can find the Reynolds number. So it is laminar indeed. And then we can apply our previous result to find the pressure drop. This is our point 1 and this is, since it is now from 1 to 2, we can write down our previous result as But the mu here is in fact So we cannot plug in the results. And from the previous equation, and we can solve that h equals, which is very long. This question also asks for the center line velocity, distribution, and wall shear stress. So let's calculate them. The center line velocity is double of the mean velocity, and velocity distribution is velocity profile is then. And we recall that tau equals, and we are only interested in the magnitude, so we differentiate it.
In pipe flow, we are usually interested in the major losses. The central goal for us to study fluid mechanics is to reduce such losses. If you look at the units, V squared by 2 has the same unit as energy per mass. And if we further do experiments, we find that the energy loss is proportional to length and inversely proportional to the diameter of the pipe. So we can obtain this expression for energy loss. And this constant in the front is called the Darcy friction factor. In general, this factor is a function of both the surface roughness and the Reynolds number. But in the laminar flow, we have already obtained an expression for the pressure drop, so that we can use it to find an expression for energy loss. For any laminar pipe flow from point 1 to point 2, and this guy is zero due to the continuity equation. And we plug in our previous results. We can write the H as Z2 minus Z1. And these two terms cancel out. So we are left with but R is one half of the diameter. And we can further make it becomes So this term here is just 64 divided by Reynolds number, and that is the F we are finding for. But then for turbulent flow, the F also varies with surface roughness, and there is no analytic solution to F. What we can do is to rely on empirical relations, say the multi chart here, to find F. Also, we can use this equation, but this equation is not an analytical solution to the F. It is just a curve-fitting equation that provides us another way to find F under turbulent flow. And indeed, the curve it is fitting is the multi-chart. For this line, the holy turbulent flow, for such flows, the surface for the pipe is so rough, so that F is not a function of Reynolds number, and it is a purely function of the surface roughness. By the way, surface roughness has a unit of length. So, we do a quick example about major loss. Given to us is the center line velocity, and the flowing fluid is a very viscous fluid. So, we assume that the flow is laminar. And under this condition, the mean velocity is half of the center line velocity. And we can use this to verify the laminar condition. So it checks. And we shall find the head loss first. And it is given in meter. Now we draw a sketch for the problem. It is an upward flow. And we apply the mechanical energy equation to that. And this is zero by continuity. And we plug in the values. And point two is 10 meters above point one. So, and we are done with this example. So, let's use both the method to solve this problem, not just use the Moody chart. But first, we shall calculate the Reynolds number and check that if it is really turbulent. So velocity is... And we can find the Reynolds number. Let's use the equation method first. The pipe is smooth, so this term is zero, and that becomes that implies. But the story isn't end here, and we want to use the 4D chart to solve this problem too. So let's do this. We look at about six, and we use a ruler to point up and go horizontally. 
which is about here. Sadly, there is some error here, but that is still close enough. Now we move on to our next example. In this example, we want to compare the difference between the loss in laminar flow and in turbulent flow. So again, we compute the velocity first. And we compute the Reynolds number. which is again greater than 4000. The question asks for the head loss ratio, and we know that head loss equals that is proportional to F. So if we get the F for both laminar and turbulent flow, then we are done with this question. First, we use the equation method to find the turbulent value. This term again goes zero since it is smooth again. And we verify our result from the Moody chart. So the Reynolds number is about 70,000. So we draw a line upward and we go horizontally. And this time, the equation result is very close to the chart result. So this checks. This is the turbulent value. Now we obtain the laminar value. And we see that the head loss in turbulent flow is much greater than the laminar flow, and the ratio is about 21. So, today we finished a lot of things about general pipe flow characteristics, and we have obtained an analytical solution for fully developed laminar pipe flow using the method of fluid element, not using the Navier-Stokes equation. Also, we have discussed what is major loss, which is the main dish of this tutorial. So, this is the end of this tutorial and thanks for watching. Feel free to ask us any question and give us any feedback in the comments below.